Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining this morning. Shri Bhagavan class and attentive Japa. Let's make a start. We're still talking about the Pachetas who have been in austerity for 10,000 years and now they are coming out of the austerity and we're going to pick it up from there. So thank you for joining this morning. So seems that they meet Lord Narayan, they get darshan of Lord Narayan and they're glorifying him. So they say, dear Lord, when the bee approaches a celestial tree called the Prijata, it certainly does not leave the tree because there is no need for such action. Similarly, when we have approached your lotus feet and taken shelter of them, what further benediction may we ask of you. So Lord Narayan was saying, please ask for benediction. I'm very pleased with you. Ask for a benediction. And they saying, we have met you, just like Dhruva Maharaj. They say, we have met you. What more benediction can we ask for? That's the highest benediction, getting the darshan of the Lord. <clears throat> so when a devotee is actually engaged in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord, his engagement in itself is so perfect that there is no need to ask for further benediction. When a bee approaches the Prajata tree, it gets unlimited supplies of honey. There is no need to go to another tree. If one is fixed in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord, there is unlimited transcendental bliss. And as such, there is no need to ask for further benediction. The Prajata tree is not commonly found within this material world. The Prajata tree is also known as Kalpa Vriksh or the wish fulfilling tree. One can get anything he desires from such a tree. So the Prajata tree and the bee are compared to us as the bee and the Lord as the Kalpa Vriksh. In the material world, one can get oranges from an orange tree or mangoes from a mango tree, but there is no possibility of getting oranges from a mango tree or vice versa. However, one can get whatever he wants from the Pijat tree. Oranges, mangoes, bananas and so on. This tree is found in the spiritual world. Chintamani, Prakar, Sadmasu, Kalpavriksh, Lakshavrateshu. The spiritual world, Chintamani Dham, is surrounded by these Kalpavriksh trees. <clears throat> but the Prijat tree is also found in the kingdom of Indra. That is on Indra's heavenly planet. This Pajat tree was brought by Krishna to please Satyabhama, one of his queens. And this tree was implanted in the Dwarka mansions constructed for the queens. The lotus feet of the Lord are exactly like the Pajat trees or wish fulfilling trees. And the devotees are like bumblebees. They are always attracted by the lotus feet of the Lord. So that's the devotees. Not everyone is necessarily attracted, but the devotees are like bumblebees are attracted to the lotus feet of the Lord. So let's do a prayer. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kroti Vachalam Pangum Langyate Grim Yat Kirpata Hamandeshi Guru Din Taranam Paramananda Madhum Shitanishram. Hari Om Tasat Narayan Namaskritya Naram Chevan Rotamam Devim Sasvit Pyasam Tato Jemudiriya Nasta Presha Bhavadureshu Nityam Bhagavasevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nestiki Hare Krishna. And they continue to say, Dear Lord, as long as we have to remain within this material world due to our material contamination and wander from one type of body to another and from one planet to another. We pray that we may associate with those who are engaged in discussing your pastimes. We pray for this benediction life after life in different bodily forms and on different planets. So you can see the sons are so much different from their father, Prachin Bari. Muni had to come and advise him and advise him extensively to leave uh, this material uh, enjoyment and go back home, actually invited him to his own planet. And here are the sons, they know everything. They are so austere <clears throat> and they worship the Lord with all their heart and soul. 
This is a benediction that a devotee can ask of the Supreme Lord. This is also confirmed by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sthane Stitha Shruti Gatam Tanu Vari Manobahi. One may be in one position or another according to destiny, but in any case, one must continue to hear about the activities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Regardless of circumstances, a pure devotee does not pray for liberation or for cessation of the cycle of birth and death because he does not consider that important. The most important thing for a devotee is getting a chance to hear about the pastimes and glories of the Lord. So although we're saying that we have to break the bondage from this material world, we have to break this cycle of birth and death, but it's mentioned that a devotee doesn't even consider those things important. They, he considers the service of the Lord on, on top of the hierarchy, never mind getting liberation or uh, you know leaving this material world, anything like that, or going back home to Godhead. Just serving the Lord is the priority. <clears throat> The most important thing for a devotee is getting a chance to hear about the pastimes and glories of the Lord. The devotees who engage in the service of the Lord in this world will have the same opportunity in the spiritual world also. So if you're serving the Lord, you will automatically get everything else, all the other benefits. You, you're qualified to go back home because you, you, know, you serve so well, you serve with your heart you will automatically go back. You don't need to desire it. It will automatically happen. <clears throat> Thus, for a devotee, everything is in the spiritual world. For as long as he can hear about the pastimes of the Lord or wherever he can chant, the Lord is personally present. Yatra, Gayanti, Mad Bhakta, Tatra, Tishthatmi, Narada. When the pure devotee assemble to chant, hear and talk about the Supreme Person of Godhead, the place where they assemble becomes Vaikuntha. For the devotee, there is no need to pray to the Lord for transfer to the Vaikuntha world. A pure devotee can create Vaikuntha or Vindavan anywhere simply by chanting the glories of the Lord without offense. So they're saying that even if you are in this material world, that can become Vaikuntha. If you are associating with the Lord directly uh, or that's that's the your only focus then this is why Kunta, because you're not going to do anything different there <clears throat> so the pachetas pray for an opportunity to hear of the glories of the lord in every form of life bave, bave. a living entity transmigrates from one body to another the devotee is not particularly eager to stop this process chaitanya mahaprabhu prays my dear Lord, life after life, may I be fixed in your pure devotional service. Out of humility, a devotee considers himself unfit to be transferred to the spiritual world. So that, that should be our mood, that we, we don't think, you know, that we have done anything that important that we should qualify to go back, back home to Godhead. We leave that to Krishna to decide. <clears throat> Out of humility, a devotee considers himself unfit to be transferred to the spiritual world. He always thinks himself contaminated by the modes of material nature. Nor is there any need for a devotee to ask to be freed from the modes of material nature. Devotion itself is in the transcendental position. Therefore, there is no question of asking for this special facility. The conclusion is that a pure devotee is not anxious to stop the repetition of birth and death, but is always eager to associate with other devotees who are engaged in chanting and hearing about the glories of the Lord. So, yeah, it can be a little bit confusing that, you know, we want to ask for escaping from this world, we want to go back home to God ahead, and then here it says, don't ask for these things. Actually, our priority is really to serve the Lord. The, the Lord will take care of the rest. Obviously, these are all the rest is side effects of what we are doing or devotion service. So it will be taken care of. That's the confidence we have as a devotee that it will be taken care of. 
even a moment's association with a pure devotee cannot be compared to being transferred to heavenly planets or even merging into the Brahman of Aljans in complete liberation. For living entities who are destined to go, give up the body and die, association with pure devotees is the higher benediction. When pure topics of the transcendental world are discussed, the members of the audience forget all kinds of material hankerings, at least for the time being. Not only that, but they are no longer envious of one another, nor do they suffer from anxiety or fear. So when we're hearing Krishna Katha and we're listening attentively and we're finding bliss in our hearing, then we forget all our troubles, right? We forget our problems. We forget our differences just for that, at least for that period of time that we just focus on the transcendental katha. Whenever pure topics or transcendental world are discussed, the members of the audience forget all kinds of material hankerings, at least for the time being. So, Vaikuntha means without anxiety, and the material world means full of anxiety, as stated by Palhad Maharaj. Sada Samud Vigna Diyam. Asad Grahat, the living entity who have accepted this material world as a residence are full of anxiety. And the living entities who have accepted this material world as a residence are full of anxiety, a place immediately becomes Vaikuntha whenever the holy topics of the personality of Godhead are discussed by pure devotees. So without anxiety becomes Vaikuntha. When the holy Topics of the personal Godhead are discussed by pure devotees. This is the process of Sharvanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smarnam. Chanting and hearing about the Supreme Lord Vishnu and remembering him as the Supreme Lord himself confirms. My dear Narad, actually I do not reside in my abode, Vaikuntha, nor do I reside within the hearts of the yogis. So this is the Lord saying to Narad, I reside in that place where my devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes, and qualities. Because of the presence of the Lord in the form of the transcendental vibration, the Vaikuntha atmosphere is evoked. This atmosphere is without fear and anxiety. One living entity does not fear another. By hearing the holy names and glories of the Lord, a person executes pious activities. Thus, his material hankerings immediately stop. So, Sri Prabhupada is saying that this Sankirtan movement started by the Society for Krishna Consciousness is meant for creating Vaikuntha, the transcendental world that is without anxiety, even in this material world. So, it's the highest uh, <clears throat> creation that uh, for for the for the human society. The method is the propagation of Sharvanam Kirtanam process throughout the world. In the material world, everyone is envious of his fellow man. Animalistic envy exists in human society as long as there is no performance of Sankirtan Yajna. But, you know, we hear and we chant as, you know, that's purifying, but we also have to process you know, what uh, Krishna Katha as well and apply in our life if you really want to progress. The chanting of the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. The Pachetas therefore decided to remain always in the society of devotees and follow the instructions you have to follow as well. And they considered that to be the highest benediction possible in human life. The Supreme Lord Narayan is present among devotees who are engaged in hearing and chanting the holy name of the Supreme Personal Godhead. The Lord Narayan is the ultimate goal of sannyasis, those in the renounced order of life. And, and Narayan is worshipped through the Sankirtan movement by those who are liberated from material contamination. Indeed, they recite the holy name again and again. Dear Lord, your personal associates, devotees, wander all over the world to purify even the holy place of pilgrimage. Is not such activity pleasing to those who are actually afraid of material existence? Dear Lord, by virtue of a moment's association with Lord Shiva, who is very dear to you, 
and who is your most intimate friend. We were fortunate to attain you because they met Lord Shiva before they entered the water for 10,000 years. You are the most expert physician capable of treating the incurable disease of material existence. On account of our great fortune, we have been able to take shelter at your lotus feet. So how fortunate they were. They met Lord Shiva when they went to do austerity and now they met the Lord himself, Lord Narayan, after completing their austerity. Dear Lord, we have studied the Vedas, accepted the spiritual master and offered respect to Brahmanas, advanced devotees and ace personalities who are spiritually very advanced. We offered our respects to them and we have not been envious of any brother, friends or anyone else. We have also undergone severe austerities within the water and have not taken food for a long time. All these spiritual assets of ours are simply offered for your satisfaction. We pray for this benediction only and nothing more. So they're saying that we've done all this just to please you, Lord. We don't want anything else. We just want to make you happy. We just want to please you. And that should be our attitude. Not to this level. We can't do this level. But everything we do should be to please the Lord. And when the Lord is pleased, he'll give you everything. Our aim is to just to please Krishna, do everything for Krishna. <clears throat> Dear Lord, even great yogis and mystics who are very much advanced by virtue of austerities and knowledge and who have completely situated themselves in pure existence, as well as great personalities like Manu, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, cannot fully understand your glories and potencies. Nonetheless, they have offered their praise according to their own capacities. In the same way, we, although much lower than these personalities, also offer our praise according to our capability. And this is what we do. We offer to our capability. Dear Lord, you have no enemies or friends. Therefore, you are equal to everyone. You cannot be contaminated by sinful activities. Your transcendental form is always beyond the material creation. You are the supreme personality of Godhead because you remain everywhere within this existence. You are consequently known as Vasudev. We offer you our respectful obeisances. The supreme personality of Godhead is known as Vasudev because he lives everywhere. His Vas is everywhere. That's why he's known as Vasudev. The Lord, the word Vas means to live <clears throat> as stated in Brahma Samhita. The Lord, his plenary portion enters into each and every universe to create the material manifestation. Actually, in fact, he enters into every atom, every universe and every atom. <clears throat> he also enters into each and every heart in all living entities and into each and every atom because the Supreme Lord lives everywhere, he is known as Vasudev. Although he lives everywhere in this material world, he is not contaminated by the modes of nature. The Lord is therefore described in Isha Panishad as a Papa Vidam. He is never contaminated by the modes of material nature. When the Lord descends to this planet, he acts in many ways. He kills demons and performs acts not sanctioned by the Vedic principles. That is, acts considered sinful even though he acts in such a way, he is never contaminated by his action. This is interesting. So, we say that when the Lord descends to this planet, he acts in many ways. He kills demons, performs acts not sanctioned by the Vedic principles. That is, acts considered sinful. Even though he acts in such a way, he is never contaminated by his action. He is therefore described here in as Shuddha. <clears throat> meaning all is free from contamination. The Lord is also Sama, equal to everyone. In this regard, he states Samaham Sarva Bhateshu Name Dvesho Priya. The Lord has no one as his friend or enemy and equal to everyone. The word Sattva indicates that the form of the Lord is not material. It is Sat Chit Ananda Vigraha, Ishwara Prama Krishna Satchit Nanda Vigra. His body is different from our material body. One should not think the Supreme Person of God has a material body like ours. So that was the Katha of the Pachetas and the Lord 
and the Pacheta is glorifying him. Now, this pastime is told by sage Maitreya to Vidur. So we just come back to them. So the great sage Maitreya continued, My dear Vidur, the Supreme Personal Godhead, who is the protector of surrendered souls, being thus addressed by the Pachetas and worshipped by them, replied, May whatever you have prayed for be fulfilled. After saying this, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose prowess is never defeated, left. The Pachetas were unwilling to be separated from him because they had not seen him to their full satisfaction. And this always, we see all the devotees, they, they are still have so much more to say, to ask, but the Lord always disappears, leaving them wanting more, more from the Lord. The prowess of the Supreme Person of God has always contains six basic opulences, one of which is renunciation. This is the thing. Although the Pachetas desire to see the Lord to their full satisfaction, the Lord left. So Lord is renounced. You know, he does not get attached to anyone or anything. He will do the best for them, but uh, he does not become attached. So according to Srila Jiva Goswami, this is an exhibition of his kindness to innumerable other devotees. Although he was being attracted by the Pachetas, he left. This is an example of his renunciation. This renunciation was also exhibited by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he stayed with Advaita Prabhu after taking snares. All the devotees, they wanted him to stay a few days longer, but the Lord Chaitanya left without hesitation. The conclusion is that although the Supreme Lord has unlimited kindness for his devotees, he is not attached to anyone. He is equally kind to his innumerable devotees all over the creation. So this is just so amazing <clears throat> that uh, like we're doing the prayer of uh, um, of uh, uh, Mangal Thakur uh, Thakur, he's uh, praying to the Lord that he that he will capture him, capture the Lord in his heart, tie him up, and he will never let him go. That that, that is a sentiment of the devotee. But uh, here it says that the Lord is never attached to anyone. He he's not. Uh, nobody can tie him down. He can't be tied. But then he is attracted to his devotees. And he will do the best for them. So thank you all so much. Thank you for joining. Hina Mataji, Shani Mataji, Mother Shamsundar Prabhu, Prameen Mataji, and Sarvashriya Mataji. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see how, how you found this um, uh, pastime or from Lord Maitreya. Sage Maitreya is telling uh, Vidur about all these uh, kathas. You know, they, they are discussing. And uh, so we, we get to hear what uh, uh, Sage Maitri is saying. Then we also get to hear about what the uh, Pachetas are saying, etc., etc. So it's, you know, stories within stories. So it's, it's very blissful. So again, we can start from uh, top of the list. Uh, Hina Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna everyone. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for uh such a such a nice, such a nice class. Thank you. Um yeah, I think my main points um are around how similar to how what projectors were, were 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 saying they were really trying to please the Lord, you know, they were trying to please the Lord. And I think the message there is around that pleasing the Lord should be our priority and how uh, you said about we must continue to pray and, and chant regardless of our circumstances. Um, service of the Lord, I guess, is the priority in life. Uh, you know, it's only in this human life that we can take advantage of doing the, such service as well. So we really shouldn't miss the boat. We shouldn't miss this opportunity. You know, it really should be our number one priority over and above everything, really. Um, and that we should only, and it was also nice how the projectors were demonstrating that we should really only pray for service. Everything else is taken care of by the Lord. He takes care of all our other needs. Um, that act of surrendering 
for him you know it removes you said about removing all our fear it removes material hankering address it you know removes any material hankerings that we have so there's so many benefits again from just something so simple really just by devoting um and prioritizing service to the lord and, and so in, in a surrendering attitude um and i really like your point around how you know the when and when devotees can really can can really help transform human society just through doing like the lord's pudgeon and their transcendental activities can can transform any place into vaikuntha it just shows the value um, and how purifying devotees are especially in this this current age as well so um like, some lovely points thank you so much Prabhu. Hare krishna thank you mataji thank you so much jai uh, shani mataji is listening uh, praveen mataji hare krishna Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, yeah, it's a devotional service is the only business we have to do. Like uh, Hina Mataji clearly pointed out the points. So like potatoes, they didn't want any benediction. And that should be our aim. We need to have full faith in Krishna. And we have to remember we are the servants of Krishna and our only business is to engage in devotional service and it also says in uh, uh, nectar of devotion that when we are engaged in serving going through other tribulations and everything and we don't look for any benedictions then we become the rightful you know like a fa uh, like a son becomes like the when the father dies the son automatically inherits you know the property and everything. So when we are serving Krishna, we become rightful to go back to him. So we become Krishna's. And to progress in Krishna consciousness, we have to lis listen to Krishna Katha uh, and follow the instructions. So uh, then only we can progress. And yeah, Bhattati, she mentioned all about when we are listening to the Katha, then all the anxieties you know they go away and we only feel the bliss and happiness which we have seen when we are in the class we are feeling so happy and we don't worry about anything and um, Prabhupada, he mentioned as well so we have to make Vrindavan we can make create Vrindavan anywhere so wherever we are worshipping Krishna we are serving Krishna that becomes Vrindavan and Vasudev you mentioned Vasudev who lives everywhere so Krishna is everywhere, living in every atom, every universe, and everyone's heart. Very nice, and, and it was nice about Prajata tree as well. So lotus, uh, lotus feet of Lord, they're compared to the Prajata tree. So it's very nice. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mother. Yeah, Thank you, Mother. yeah it's, it's very, uh, very attractive, you know, to hear that. Oh, you know, because Krishna, uh, in chapter ten. Talks about his opulences. Uh, he talks about uh, uh, you know about going back home. You know what is there. You know you don't need any light. And he's he's also talk about uh, he, he, he talks he talks about these uh, trees. There's kalpa vikshis there. So you know it's I think you get excited. Yeah, they, you know that sounds really great. You know there's kalpa vikshis. We we have this material mentality. You know to <laughs> in a material way. Although we'll have spiritual bodies. You know, we won't. We probably won't have these tastes that we feel in the material body. Uh, you know, these uh, dull senses. But you get, you know, there's like excitement uh, that oh, we can order anything we want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just makes it more exciting. Krishna tells us all these things to get us excited. Look, you know, why are you living in this dirty place? Come back home, and uh, you know, there's everything there. You know, it's like a father saying to his son that everything is in this. You know, I give you everything. You know, you have your all the facilities here. Why you want to go and live somewhere else, you know, in a in a in a slum area or something? It's like that, you know. You know, this material world is like a slum compared to the kingdom of our father. So it's you know, Krishna really excites us saying, look, everything is here. You know, you can order whatever you want. You know, there's no questions asked, and uh, yes, you know, it sounds really exciting. You know, 
but that that's our nature you know we we we're thinking of uh you know how how we will get excitement you know how how much fun we can have so you know we were thinking about pleasing our senses uh, that's you know that's nothing for my own own part to view you know when krishna is telling us these things i think wow that sounds really great you know definitely yeah. worth to visit a uh, place to visit at least you know but we we that's our home we live there yeah, because we are badly conditioned. So I have <laughs> so many bad qualities. And, uh, but now, thank you to Srila Prabhupada to give us all, you know, the books and everything so we can try and steer our boat that way. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, what you said, you know, that, uh, you know, about creating the atmosphere and, uh, you know, enjoying with the Lord, etc. We have to remember that uh, it, Prabhupada mentions that the servant of a king enjoys just like the king. So if, if you are if you are a close servant of a king, then you are eating what the king is eating. You are watching what the king is watching. You are hearing what the king is hearing. So you're just enjoying just like the king. Or if you are a driver of a very wealthy person and you know you are you are sitting in the same car in the same luxury as that you know tycoon and you know if he's enjoying uh, air conditioning which you know probably has more relevance say somewhere like india you know it's very so hot uh, so you're enjoying that air conditioning as well so servant of the king is enjoying just like the king only thing you know you you're a label servant and the the king is labeled king, but your enjoyment is the same. So but you... I, I would say enjoyment is more Prabhuji because the servant doesn't have to worry about other things yeah. which the king will have to worry. Very good. You know, yeah. Very good. They've done this or so where's the money coming and this and that, but he's there just to enjoy. And yeah, he has to do physical labor, but that's keeping him fit as well. <laughs> and... Yeah, absolutely. Good for your health. The, yeah. the king might be, you know, become so fat. So yeah. easily. So yeah, very good point. Uh, absolutely. So you know, you enjoy with if that's look that's what Lord Krishna says. He says, enjoy with me. You know, don't try to enjoy separately because then your separate enjoy won't be as good as it would be with myself. You know, it's safer to you know stay with me, and you'll get everything you want. You, you don't need to have separate. Thank you, Madhuri. And uh, also, see one of the. One of the issues is that the Pachetas don't want anything. They're saying, hey, Lord, your darshan, you know, we're happy with. Like Dhruv said the same thing. But before they met the Lord, they probably had desires. And Dhruv also had desires. And we we haven't met the Lord face to face. Let's, you know, let's be honest. We haven't met the Lord face to face. But we have so many desires. Right. I mean, if you met the Lord, maybe just maybe we might decide that now we only want the Lord. We don't want anything else. But we haven't met Him, uh, or we have met Him, but we have forgotten Him. And so we we have. It's very difficult for us not to desire. You know, we say, you know, we shouldn't desire anything. Just ask for service. But it's very difficult because we haven't met the Lord face to face, and uh, we we have so many desires and very difficult to to get out of that uh, mode you know we we have we have desires and it's difficult to not to desire so it's, it's you know we are in a difficult situation so purification is very important and you know it's, it's a slow process we have to convert those desire to spiritual desires slowly you know we can't just we can't just say we don't want anything because we do as you mentioned mataji Prabhupada mataji last week uh, you gave example of the the suits and you know clothing and everything. Very difficult for us not to design anything, but slowly we work on it you know, by chanting. Yeah, even little things like cooking prashadam. So we always think, oh, I haven't made this, you know, I haven't eaten this. Oh, I'll make yeah. this for the Lord. But it's me first, and then oh yeah, I'll offer to Lord. So even that concept is so hard to think. Okay, what Krishna wants to eat today. So we still think what we want to eat, you know, majority of the time it happens to me. Oh, definitely. It's, it's us first, you know, what we like to eat today. <laughs> uh, and we think, 
well, you know, this taste coming to a mouth or this thought, maybe Krishna wants it, that's why it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we always find some excuse uh, to yeah. please ourselves, isn't it? So, yeah. okay. Thank you so much, Madhuri. Hare Krishna. Uh, Sarveshya Madhuri. Hare Bo. Nice to be back. Uh, Hare Krishna. Well, the first, first week I couldn't join because my you know, phone was not working. Second week, uh, somebody came to do the house. Oh. Uh, his, his uh, anyway, um, Hare Krishna to everybody. Um, what can I say? I can just say that by meeting with the pure devotees, we can love, we can, we learn to love. We, we can know about God without meeting any of God, anybody or anybody telling it about God. We don't know anything. So the devotees are just like they're just waiting Bhagavad Gita. And so people can get to, to know about Krishna and uh, uh, how to love God, what the material life is and what spiritual life is. And it is very hard to get out of this material world because uh, we are in material world, so we like to do material activities and we like to enjoy ourselves. So we like to, um, but uh, we forget that um, everything is even given by Krishna and we should offer, offer everything to Krishna. And uh, not, not, nothing belongs to us, everything, but we think that everything is just come by chance, you know, we don't never think who is the giver of all this. Because in the 10th, uh, 10th 11th, uh, 10th chapter, Krishna says, I'm give, I give everything, I'm the moon, I'm the sun, I give the heat, I give the uh, I'm, I'm sun, give the heat, and I'm the moon, I'm not receive the food. So without uh, Krishna's energy, we are nothing, but uh, people haven't got knowledge. They, they know, they don't know anything. They say it's just some version. And uh, so, so mind and uh, senses are so strong that we we desire, we desire to be happy. We desire to have some more money, some without, and some bigger house as every, but we know, never think of pleasing what desire, our desire should be to please Krishna. And, uh, and, and one way you know, say that uh, we please Krishna, everybody please Krishna, is by chanting Maha Mantra. That's, that's why we chant, which not for ourselves, but uh, it's, it's for Krishna. It's uh, to, to please Krishna. That is this, uh, the chanting of Maha Mantra. Is. So we try to control our senses, we try to control our mind. And um, if we control the mind, we can control the senses. If we can't control the mind, senses can't be controlled because it's, senses are controlled by mind. So we try to desire and uh, we try to please Krishna. We try to uh, meet with the devotee, association with the devotees, so we can learn. We can have knowledge. Without knowledge, we don't know anything. We can't do anything for Krishna. So that's that's how the this success is there. They were very lucky to Lord met meet Lord Shiva and Narada. So it's it's a desire of Krishna. He pleases the says you may send somebody. If you want to advance in the spiritual life, you send somebody to help you. So we should always desire for the channel Krishna and so we should know about Krishna and love Krishna and be pleasing. That's, our, that's why we are, because we are part and parcel of Krishna. And we are servant of Krishna. Servant always tries to please the master. So we always try to please Krishna. And then we'll be happy as well. Krishna will be happy, we'll be happy. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Wonderful points. Absolutely. You know, you find that Krishna helps, helps you. Even before you came to Krishna consciousness, God, you know, they always like, Find you, you find that there's some divine intervention in things that happen. No, you're trying to please him. And uh, even like Mother mentioned, even our our chanting and uh, hearing, you know, we, we're doing everything just like the Pachetas to please Krishna, right? Because we want him to, that, you know, want him to see that, you know, we're doing something um, that, uh, you know, we, we are thinking of him and uh, we are glorifying him. We're asking him for service. 
So Krishna is happy, you know, we're doing all these things. So there's divine intervention before we even came to Krishna consciousness. Why wouldn't there be divine intervention uh, now? And especially now, you know, we should only ask for devotional service. And then Krishna finds ways. He really does. You know, you find your ways how you can improve your devotional service. You know, you'll create situations. You'll create, uh, you'll send people uh, association that you, you can improve. But, you know, you have to desire it. That's the important thing, that you want it. If you want it, you will, you'll find ways and to, to fulfill that um, desire for you. So thank you so much. Uh, Prem Prakash Prabhu? I was not there for all the time, but yes, a uh, few things which I actually gathered, I can actually just share, which is new thing for me. I mean, I always heard Vasude. I always knew that term Vas means to stay. And um, just for the first time, I heard that Vasude means to stay. I mean, for a personality who actually stays everywhere. I understood that personality state everywhere is Vishnu. And that's self all prevailing. That's what I was aware. Of. But this, this, uh, this is a new thing for me. But obviously, uh, the rest of the lecture. So I really appreciate that. The rest of the lecture was amazing, uh, as far as I was able to hear. And about desire that we have, um, we always worry. I mean, I definitely always worry. That how the desires will transform because there are a lot, a lot of many material desires. And even when you don't realize that they are material desires, sometimes Krishna makes us realize that yes, you still have the material desire. Um, by taking something sometimes away, uh, it's not by taking some things, but he has his means to we keep on realizing that we are not pure yet. But obviously, with these examples, it's quite uh assuring that when actually Krishna wants to change desire of some person can definitely do that but what is important is the desire to change is more important desire to leave of material desire is also very important so and that's that's what I would say to you and uh, thank you so much thank you yeah absolutely you know we've got to be wanting it otherwise uh, you know what what's the you know, what's the reason what we do we desire to come to the material world, and <laughs> that, that was fulfilled. So, yeah, desire, we have to be careful what we desire at the end of the day. Be careful. Wonderful. Okay, let's do a couple of rounds. Uh, Sureshi Mataji and Prabhupada Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 